It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. GC Aesthetics, maker of Nagor and Eurosilicon implants, have asked me to share with you some of my nutrition tips to help support your body if you're considering or have undergone breast reconstructive surgery. I hope my videos provide some food for thought. A study released by the University of California showed that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables can protect against breast cancer or breast cancer reoccurrence. So that five a day message is really, really important. Now, while all fruits and vegetables are good for you, some are even better than others. And those include the cruciferous vegetable family. So that's your broccoli, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli in particular is thought to help inhibit tumor growth. So try to include that in your diet. Try also to include carrots and sweet potatoes. They're carotenoid rich, rich in vitamin A, which again is thought to be protective in these circumstances. Lastly, if you don't like eating vegetables, why don't you try juicing them? Juicing is an easy way to get a concentration of those nutrients, protective nutrients, without having to eat so many of them. Good luck. Let's talk about protein and fats now. Now, anti-inflammatory fats actually help to support healing. So those are your omega-3 fatty acids you might have heard of before. You'll find them in oily fish, things like salmon, mackerel, to a lesser extent tuna. You've got to aim for at least a couple of portions a week to get those benefits. Now, vegetarian sources include things like omega-rich eggs, nuts and seeds, flax seed, even hemp seed, which is actually quite easy to get hold of these days. Now, protein contains amino acids, the building blocks in your body. So really, again, important at this particular time to focus a little bit more on quality protein in your diet. Aim for a palm-sized portion in your main meal, so lunch and dinner. You can try it in breakfast too, but lunch and dinner in particular. And of course, my palm is proportioned to my body size and the same for you. And the other great thing about protein is it helps to keep you fuller for longer. So it's working for you on many levels. Spice it up. Certain herbs and spices contain bioflavonoids and polyphenols, which help to reduce free radical production and can reduce inflammation. Now, add as much in the way of herbs and natural herbs and spices as you can into your cooking, really in replacement of salt, which, as we all know, has some downsides. If you can't do without that salty taste, then make sure you're getting it from a good quality sea salt, a grey salt, or a pink Himalayan salt, all of which contain more minerals and are a bit safer. Snack on what I call a daily healing handful. That's a mixture of fresh nuts and seeds that you can make up yourself to your own taste buds and keep it somewhere prominent, somewhere like your kitchen countertop or your office desk. So you remember to sprinkle them on salads, on a porridge, on yogurt, fruit salad perhaps, whatever you want really. Because those nuts and seeds are rich in what's known as a micronutrient called zinc, which is thought to help promote healing and reduce scarring. They're also a good source of vitamin E, which is thought to do the same. Keep it real. What do I mean by that? Well, if you can't pronounce what it says in the label of what you're about to eat, you probably shouldn't be eating it in the first place. Real food, unprocessed food as close to its natural state, contains more nutrients and less hidden fats and sugars. Now, those sugars aren't just bad for your waistline, they can also hinder healing. Now, remember, real food is actually easier to eat the right portions of. So, for example, nobody ever binges on lentil soup, do they? Nobody ever eats too much salmon, or it'd be very rare to. Whereas the one pop can't stop, processed foods are very easy to overindulge in.